Hello, hello, and welcome to the Notary Life with Kimmy podcast. I am also one of the trainers with Notary Educators, which includes myself, Kimmy Nunnally, Angela Johnson, and Alexis Franklin. We each own our own very successful notary businesses and teach notaries in all 50 states to be great and grow their own business. We will discuss general notary work, apostilles, ink fingerprinting, and the duties of a notary signing agent, and much, much more. For all of your notary needs, please visit notaryeducatorsllc.com. We hope you enjoy the show, and we wish you much success. Hello, hello. Hey, everybody. This is Kimmy with Notary Life with Kimmy, along with Angela from AJ Mobile Notary Services. How is everyone doing? Hello, hello, everybody. We know it's the holiday, so we appreciate y'all hanging out. This will be as long as you want it to be. We do have a topic. Welcome. Where are you guys from this evening? Where are you? Are you vacationing? Are you with the fam? I actually did a little traveling myself. Um earlier so i made it back yesterday actually i went to tennessee nashville yep. went got some white castle hamburgers i don't know if you guys know about that i'm from detroit originally so we don't have one in atlanta so that's what we did what you been up to angela nothing i've been holding down the fort while kim been going to get some white castle hamburgers yes <laughs> she has been working hey stone mountain in the house at home yes hey djs djs hey djs house. Hey, DJS, how you doing out there with them people? You being nice to everybody? <laughs> so tonight's topic, guys, um, you got a story tonight, Angela? I didn't even ask you. Do I have a story tonight? Oh, I got a short story. Okay. While well, we wait for a few more to get on before we get into tonight's um, discussion. Yeah. So I did a, it's a very short story. I did a divorce signing yesterday, believe it or not. They call, it's a repeat customer, actually. And they called me on uh, Friday and uh, made an appointment for Saturday. No, called me for Saturday, made an appointment for Sunday. And so um, anyway, I met them at Starbucks. One got there before the other one. And I'm just saying this little short story to say, just don't be getting involved in people's business, even if they're talking. Because one of the couples were talking and was like, well, you know what? They ain't been home in 57 days and I'm not taking this no more. Just going on and on about uh, I'm just tired of this and it's over and da 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 da. And you know, Miss Angela, this and da 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 da. I just didn't even look at him in the face, you guys. I was just like, Can I have your driver's license, please? Writing in my book. He was talking. I would look up at him to let him know that I wasn't completely ignoring him. But I was just writing in my book. I just let him talk and I didn't say nothing. And so when the other person came, they was actually a little late. And I was like, I'm about to start charging you guys a $20 uh, wait fee because they're not here yet. So he called and the other person showed up and I'm just saying that to say then the other person got there. He was um, he was still complaining. But when the other person got there, they were kind of quiet. And I'm like, I'm not saying anything. So just don't comment when people you're going through divorce signings. I wouldn't comment. I wouldn't say anything. I listened, but I wasn't listening. But I pretended like I was listening. So it was just an awkward situation. Yeah. You ever had anything like that happen, Kim? Oh yeah, divorce signings are the are the most emotional. Those and end of life when you're dealing with hospice are very emotional. So you did the right thing, just stay neutral. That's what I teach in my books, and I teach that in my new course. If you haven't heard about it, guys, it dropped today. <laughs> General notary business. Don't be scared. So we talk Don't about be scared. But um, yeah, thank you guys for joining us, and hello to everyone. Hello, hello. That we did not get a chance to say hi to, and those on the replay. Hey, Valerie, Danielle. As Roberts, hey Debbie, signed by. Oh, Nada, oh, thanks, Nada Jean. Yeah, Angela, what's up? What's up, people? Hey, Miss CC, Valerie. I Doc think we PT. Are, yeah, young. A couple men with us tonight. Hey, yeah, Doc PT here. Frank is here. Yeah, Angela, Joy, Theodosa. Hey, Gilmore, Wanda, Stephanie, Pamela, Tempest. Hey, welcome everybody, and to those who will join us on the replay. And David oh, Holden has just purchased your book. Thank you, David. Yes, thank you for buying it. Hey, Rhonda over on Facebook and Stephanie's over on Facebook too. So, hey guys, so let's get into our topic. We about to get into your money, okay? So don't be mad at me. 
or answer will be just a messenger. And the main purpose of tonight's discussion is we want your business to grow. So we're just going to give you some things to think about. So right. the topic for those who do not know is, is your notary business profitable? As I went through my questions and I started really thinking about what I wanted to ask you guys tonight, I said I probably should have called it something that's a little bit different. But after we go through what we're talking about, you're going to see why you may not be profitable. Okay, so let's get right into it. So a couple things I had is you have to know your true expenses for running your business. Mm -hmm. Do you all know this is going to be very interactive tonight? So go real quick. Do you guys know how much it costs to actually run your business? Now I'm going to be straight up with you. Mm -hmm. For a notary business, your supplies and stuff should not be that much. If you're doing a lot of loan signing, yeah, you have the ink and toner. But if you're doing general notary work, your expenses should be very minimal. Mm -hmm. Once you buy your stamp, your ink, and what else? Receipt book. It's not that much to start up a general notary business. It's just not. What's mm -hmm. your thoughts on that, Angela, about actually having a um, budget, like your expenses, knowing how much you have to, what it takes to run your business? I totally agree. Uh, general notary work. You really, on a monthly basis, your what your outgoing expenditures are should be very, very low. My For my general notary work, for my business period, my most, uh, most expenses that I have each month is for gas. Other than yeah, that, about that one, yeah. gas is my biggest ex expense. Other than that, my expenses are very, 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 very low because I don't have to buy paper every month. For instance... The past two months, I have not bought anything. Last month was the first month I had to buy some toner for my laser printer, which was kind of expensive. But other than that, I watch my expenses every month. I, I don't know about you, Kim, but I really know what I'm going to have to spend for the month. And it's usually very low. It really is for me, too. My general mm -hmm. notary, I mean, nothing. And I have enough paper. I don't have enough ink when I was right. buying it. So actual supplies i have not bought in a minute this this should be a business guys where you should be making money right you should be making money once you do that initial investment so let's talk about a few more i see a lot of no's in the chat so start thinking about what it actually costs to run your business and i'm like mm -hmm. angela i think gas will be my most expensive right now mm -hmm. um and that depends on how many jobs i do how far i have right. to travel right so let's talk about it so another reason why you may not be profitable profitable or can be more profitable how are you pricing your jobs are you pricing them too low i'm not going to any kind of order guys we're just randomly talking here so my next one i had on my list is are you pricing your jobs too low i have been guilty of this angela's never guilty of this one <laughs> but do you guys t tend to price your jobs too low let me know what yeah like when somebody call me, I might let my emotions get the better of me. I'm like, oh, they don't have any money. Yes, she does, you guys. I had a man last week, he rolled up. So he says his bill was um $85. And he says, I could either give you 80 or I can give you a hundred because he didn't have any change. So he wanted me to give him the $15 change. Fortunately, fortunately, I had it. Sometimes I don't have change, right? So I was thinking to myself, I already undercharged you and I gave you two witnesses and everything. Why you can't just give me the hundred, right? He put out a wad of 20s like this, guys. Big old wad. If you can't see me, I mean, my fingers are up, okay? And I was thinking to myself, Kim, you know you underpriced that job. So a lot of times you guys hear me say I give Jeffrey free as a witness. I and told her don't girl, do it. Yep, I'm not doing it no more. No more. If they need two witnesses, Jeffrey's not free. Because if Jeffrey don't sign that paper, Jeffrey's my husband for those who don't know. And I usually just throw him in whatever the price, right? <laughs> no, nah, in the future, if they need two witnesses, they have to pay for him too. Just like I do the signing companies. Why? Because that document does not go anywhere without two witnesses. And Jeffrey's using his time, energy, and resources. Right. So in the future, I'm going to start charging for him. Anything else that you could charge differently for to in your business, Angela, to bring up the bottom line? So what I do also is, and I don't know how you do this, I give the person actually uh, the opportunity to choose if they want to come to me, if I want to come to them, because when they ask about pricing, I say, are you coming to me or am I coming to you? And then I just tell them, if you're coming to me, is this much? If I'm coming to you, is this much? And I'm surprisingly, a lot of times they choose me to come to them. So I make sure, especially with gas, I have up my price just by a couple of dollars, like $5 because of the gas prices. But when they come to me, I do do it kind of low, but I make sure that I get 
that I'm not just paying for gas to go to somebody's house and notarize a document. Right. You got to make something out the deal. So I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat that if their spouses do charge for them, and I love it. I thank you guys for sharing. And I am going in a new direction. Starting tomorrow, they will be paying for Jeffrey to put his handcock on something. Yay. For those of who you who are younger, handcock means signature. Because <laughs> that might be an old term. So before Jeffrey signs something, he going to start right. getting paid too. Right. All right. And then also head to my Michigan person. I'm just kind of skimming really quick because you guys know I'm from Michigan originally. And uh, what else? Simpson said, how, how much do you charge for estate planning? We all come back to your questions. Yeah. But estate planning, basically, guys, check out my new course, General Notary. Don't be scared. It's not that complicated. When you think of estate planning, you think, oh, this big old huge package. Sometimes they are, but most of those only have like five or six notarizations in them. Mm -hmm. what, you're, what they're paying you for with estate planning is your skill set. Every notary is not equipped to do estate documents. And it's as simple as that. So my new course that will help you to notarize like a pro mm -hmm. and be able to have a general notary business like a pro. You don't yeah. have to be afraid of nursing homes, hospitals, jail signings. I cover everything. Mm -hmm. uh, inspections. What do you need for that? So I cover everything in that course. And we're going to talk about all that later. So let's and, get back to my list. Oh, go and, ahead. Speaking, and speaking of uh, pricing too low, I remember my first estate package I have. And I just cringe over still today because with the state planning, you really have to be careful about your questions that you ask. Mm -hmm. Because I charged that person $125 for that estate package. It should have been $200. Because when I got there, and it was my fault, so I didn't change the price. But when I got there, she literally had like 14 stacks of documents. After I organized it and you know got it straight, it was like 14 stacks of documents. Some of them had double notaries and all this. I spent probably about an hour there notarizing those documents and then double checking them because I'm the notary and I want to make sure that her documents are notarized properly and in order. And she appreciated that. But uh, when you're doing stuff like estate documents and notarizing them, your questions have to be on point. If yeah. you don't ask the right questions, you may get there. To, literally, the stack of documents were like that. Yes. Yeah. And or they could be that little bit. But this was like literally. So, so you have the to ask. Is really important because I should have charged two hundred dollars. I should have charged two hundred dollars for that state package. Yes, and questions equal money, guys. That's my statement. Angela, what would Angela do? Mine is questions equal money. The more questions you ask, the bill is just a cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. So, and I've had this happen too. Somebody will say, "Oh, I have a power of attorney," and then they'll say, "Oh, I have a will," and then they'll say, "I have a," and I'm thinking to myself, "You got a whole trust package. That's what you really got." So now the price has changed, right? Because they're trying to, so I don't always want to say they're trying to play you, but sometimes they know what they have and they just don't want to tell you what it is. So they'll mm -hmm. just kind of keep, oh, I only have this. I only, somebody put that in Facebook the other day. I loved it. <laughs> they said, whenever somebody say, I only, that lets them know, hey, right. <laughs> red flag, red flag. Right. <laughs> All right. So my next one, guys, is at the end of the month, you do uh, running, um, again, it's kind of go back to the first question. But at the end of the month, have you made a profit or a loss? What's your total? Mm -hmm. Are you using like notary gadget is my preferred method of keeping up with my money. I put in what I make there, what, um, how far I had to go. And it will tell you profit and loss for each job. If you have mm -hmm. not used that or checked it out, I have a, um, a affiliate link over at notary educators. Just click it. And you can do 14 entries for free. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I think it's eight ninety nine per month. And I'll let Angela tell you her story about Notary Gadget because she did not use it until this year. Last year, I did not use Notary Gadget, even though Kim had said, Angela, you should use Notary Gadget. And let me tell you, it was the most horrible thing in my life I've ever had to go through with my taxes. I just, Kim would call me and it was be like, I would be like, I don't even have time to talk. I really didn't have time to talk to her and there's a project we were working on. And she wanted me to do it. And she just kept saying, Angela, I'm like, I'm saying to myself, I never told her this. I'm like, Kim, I ain't got time for that right now because I got to get these taxes done. It, even though I had my taxes in order per se, I have spreadsheets, but I still had to go through everything, organize everything, get it ready for my tax preparer. And I promise you, I won't be doing that this year because I'm using Notary Gadget. It yeah, is already laid you, out. Mm -hmm. And with Notary Gadget, you can put in there, like, so if you're doing your I-9, you can put, put that in there. You can put your fingerprinting in there and it'll keep a track of all of that. So you might say next year, you know what? I didn't make enough money on I-9s. I don't even want to be bothered with it. Now, I'm never going to say that. That that was just an illustration of why. Because if I make $50 on I-9, that's $50 more than I had. So I'm never going to say that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, again, your phone don't ring for every product right. all day long. But when it does ring, can you do it? And if you can't, check out them courses. They will sell for 50% off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, guys. So let's move on to the next one. Um, do you have a bank account? So you often hear me say, if you're just starting out, you may want to mm -hmm. wait on getting a business bank account. And that still may be true. I don't want you spending a whole lot of money. You haven't even got started yet. But the cash that you do receive, because sometimes as notaries, we get a little, you know, we get 20s and $25 mm -hmm. here. Are you just going out and re are buying like a coffee with that instead of putting it through your bank account? I don't know if you just saw my re recent video about uh, me opening a business bank account. But a lot of times we take the cash in and we just willy nilly go to lunch. Well, no, you need to give an accounting for that money. Mm -hmm. You need to go into your bank account, all of it. And then you can start paying yourself for whatever. So mm -hmm. just think about that. Because a lot of times I'll hear people say, well, you know, I have $50. I don't know where it went, mm -hmm. especially in our business, because you're just mm -hmm. pulling it out your, out your purse or whatever, mm -hmm. your wallet. Okay. So we talked about a budget. How about advertising? Are you spending too much money on advertising? Let me know. Do you pay for ads? And if so, do you feel like you're making money on your ads? Mm -hmm. That's how you forget you have the ad running. Are you doing thumbtack? And you might could just work, be working on your Google page to make that better instead of mm -hmm. paying thumbtack or mm -hmm. instead of paying Google ads because mm -hmm. you need posting daily. Let me know about that. Um, Angela, if you kind of check really quick too. So are you paying for ads? Now, initially, um, when it, I'm just looking at the chat. When it comes to ads, I, I've i done it before. I'm not anti-ad, but if I can build my own Google page in such a way where people don't, where I don't have to pay for it, I'm going to always opt for free. Okay? So Cleisha says she's never used ads. I know Angela had, and I know to get started, Angela, you did use ads. I did. I think it was the best business decision I ever made. Okay. I used ads in the beginning, probably about six weeks. And my business has been on top since, you know, I've asked people for reviews. Uh, yeah, I've used ads and I, I don't regret using ads. And I it, it, it wasn't really, really expensive either. So yeah, the one thing we always mention too, is that you just have to be careful as to when you run your ads. Yes. Make it work for you. Just don't run an ad all day. Make it work for you. When yes. you're going to be able to go to calls if you get a call from your Google My Business. Yeah. So what does that look like? So if I'm only open from eight to twelve, I'm not running an ad from eight to midnight because I already know I'm not looking for work during that time. So why am I letting people click on my ads? Because Google, you pay every time they click. So if you already know, hey, I'm not working from from five until midnight. Why am I running an ad when I'm asleep? You know, midnight through the early morning. So kind of get strategic. So the more money that you don't spend out, that's more money that you're making. That's when you become profitable. If you're just paying out money, paying out money, you will you won't be profitable. And let's hit Facebook really quick. So to buy the new course, Tisha, it's going to be at notaryeducatorsllc.com. And all five of them are online uh, right now, half price, the online courses. Hey, Florence. And Victor says his only expenses are Google ads and gas. Right. Yes. So that's how you want to keep it very minimal. And then again, in a notary business, it should not be that much. Right. Uh, notary gadget is eight ninety nine per month. And I see Carla says she uses notary assist. So I've yeah. not tried it. So I can't comment. Mm -hmm. I've only ever used um, notary gadget. So we talked about advertising. So I'm going to give you a tip here. Again, we want you to go back and look at your listing for your marketing. Make sure you're not overpaying. Okay. Make sure you're only paying for what you need. And then if you find that you're not actually benefiting from ads, stop them. Stop them. Don't just keep paying on a whim, a wish, and a prayer that oh, I'm going to just keep investing and then I'm going to make money. Right. If you're not making money like month two with ads, eh, and now you need to probably do something different. And right. normally that just means paying more attention to your Google page. Mm -hmm. Post a little something on your Google page. Happy Sunday mm -hmm. from Not Better Notary. Or describe what a will is in the uh, I think it's a 30 second video or 25 second video. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is not better notary. Let me tell you what a wheel is or however you want to say it, you know, right. but I'm just giving you some tips post on your Google page and shake that algorithm. Okay. One, now let's move on. You want to say something else, Angela? Yeah. Just back about ads and advertising. And I don't know if you got this further up, but um, one thing that I do speaking of like making your business profitable, do you have in mind at the beginning of the month, what revenue you want to bring in for your business every month at the first of the month i have yeah. in my mind this is how much revenue i want to make for this month and every week at the end of the week 
I see where I am. And what I'll do when I'm out, I will go drop out business cards. If I'm not where I want to be, I'll go drop out business cards. I'll check on my current clients that are businesses. And I just like that's that's shaking up my algorithm with businesses and other, you know, things like that. I'll go to the places that I already get business from and I will um, just say hi. I go by places and I drop off Starbucks. And just I was telling Kim just the other day, I was going somewhere and my mind just kept telling me to stop by this place. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to be bothered. It's hot. But I just could not stop getting it out of my mind. So I went in and I talked to the lady, the manager, and I told her I was a notary and I told her what I do. And she was like, oh, my gosh, that is so great. Can you can I please have some cards? Went back to my car, brought her a stack of cards. She said, I will definitely call you. We have people coming in here asking for notaries all the time. So I check my business every week. What do I want to make for the month where I'm where I'm at each week at the end of each week? And I do my marketing and go out based on where I am. And like I sometimes the 23rd of the month, I'm like, OK, Kim, I've been working hard. I made my money. I'm just going to slow down and just, you know, coast with it. So every week, just, you know, take care of your business. It's not something where you stop and just wait every week. Just take care of something, do something. And I always said consistency is the key. Consistently market, even if it's just a little thing. Yeah, Angela is really good about that, too. She's like, okay, I made my money. I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, you want to go do this job? No. <laughs> but if she does not make her money, she hustling. She's hustling. So I, I've learned that from her, too. How much do I want to make this week? You know, have a goal. You want to take a trip? How much, do you, how much do you need to make this month in order to make that happen? How much do you need to make to pay this bill or whatever it is? Um, but have a goal and a number in your mind because if not, it'll just come in and go out. You have no clue what happened. And I saw um, Notary Me said that the cash come in and she's guilty of that one. And all of us have been. I'm, I'm not guilty of that one. Uh oh, Steph Angela. She always accepts me. Uh, I'm serious. When I when they give me cash, I have this at home. I have my business cash receipts. I take it out of my purse or out of my notary bag. I immediately put it in that bag at the end of the month. I get it. I take it to the bank and I put it in the bank. That was what Tim said. said uh, with cash, can we do one big deposit or should we do a separate deposit each transaction? I yes, mean, I don't have a bank close enough to me to run all day long. So mm -mm. I I go every couple, I don't know, every couple of days or weeks. I, I don't really to. get that much cash. Um, honestly, I don't get a lot. Most of my people, because I use cash app which is we'll, we'll talk about that later but um i use cash app so most of my people pay with cash app so it'll go directly to wherever it needs to yeah. go i, I go um, to the bank once a month with my cash and i just deposit it yeah somebody want to give alexis a shout out about um they helped her with the, uh, she helped them with the google page joanne thank you joanne alexis is not here tonight i forgot to mention it so she's supposed to join us maybe in the chat but she was not able to join us but you're getting a shout out alexis on google my business if you do need help with that you know, reach out for her, uh, reach out to her rather for one of her sessions, either an hour or two hours, whatever you need. And then, okay, so the next thing I had on my list, guys, to make us profitable or to find out why we're not, are you paying for things that are free? For example, someone put in our Facebook group earlier that they needed some giraffes and acknowledgements and they were going to pay for them. If you go to your state website, most of the time they're free. How about mm -hmm. you guys? Do you buy that kind of stuff? Now, I know if you're a member of the internet, they give it to you for what's free, but it's $69 per year, right? But I'm not going to another website and spending $25 on blank giraffes and acknowledgements when I get them free from the state. So that could save some money, money right there if you're using right. a bunch of them. So don't just give out money willy-nilly. Find out what's my free resource first. Mm -hmm. So in that case, if you need blank giraffes, blank um, acknowledgements, start out with your state. If you are paying the NNA, Go to their website and get them for what's included in your membership. Okay. Also, let's talk about that right quick. Do you need an NNA membership? I used to say no. <laughs> and I say yes. And Angela says yes. But I, Kim, in your defense, though, your husband had defense? one. Your husband well, yeah, had one. Yeah, Jeffrey had his own. So I didn't really need it because I would kind of call through him and they would always let me answer, ask a question or something. They're really great. I love the NNA, actually. But I, I can be cheap, as you guys already told you, right? So I went ahead and got my own membership this year, and I've enjoyed it. It's only $69. And for you that are new, I highly recommend it. You know why? Because you can call them from 
there are California times, so you can call them just about all day up until eight at night if you got yeah. a question about a notary mm -hmm. certificate. And they will get you an answer. I had a tricky one and I called myself, guys. I called. So anybody <laughs> can call. <laughs> I'm not above calling the NNA. I'm like, help. Mm. <laughs> I got the certificate. I think I called, I did. I called Angela. I talked to Jeffrey. And all of us was like, you know what? Call the NNA. Mm -hmm. So they didn't tell us nothing that we already didn't know, full disclosure. But I just want to hear from a, a higher source. How about that? So I called the NNA. Now, y'all going to get me on this one because y'all know I'm big on marketing. But do you spend a lot of money on ink pens and, and fancy stuff like that to pass out to people? I mean, I see some cute stuff out there. But are we spending all of our money on advertising that way? Right. Ink pens. Is that your pen, Angela? What's your Dollar pen? Tree. Oh. <laughs> they write blue or black. That's all I need. They don't need to be. Exactly. Now, so my pen is that. fancy. My pen right. is but you know what? People will ask for your pens. They do. I but get them all the time. They do all the time. So that's why I don't buy fancy pens. I keep well, my fancy I don't give them my nice, my nice pens that I have in the supply list for, for you guys doing long signing out there. I don't give them my nice e pens. But I'll give them one of my little 10 for a dollar one sometimes because I didn't charge them enough to offset that. Mm -hmm. But do you have to have all this fancy stuff? Do you have to have a gum pack with your business name on it? Mm -mm. Not that you create it at home. And even then, you should be out marketing instead of creating gum packs, in my opinion. Um, so are you spending a lot of money on unnecessary, unnecessary stuff to promote your business? Mm -hmm. I believe in a nice T-shirt. I believe in your magnets. I believe in a couple of basic things to advertise. And your business cards is the most important. With those three, the trifecta, magnet, T-shirt, and cards, you should be straight. Mm -hmm. Save your money. If you're not making a lot of money, you don't need to be buying ink pens and giving everybody no pen. Mm -mm. They can find you. Give them a business card. You heard it here first. I'm a dollar store out. pen. They mirror. They, if you give them a business card and a dollar store pen, they say, "Oh, I get this from the notary." But does it have to be pre-printed, fancy? Uh, uh. Check no. the. You can check the comments, Angela. I'm gonna keep going. How about well, Victor, bothering your too much? Oh, go Victor, ahead, Angela. Victor on Facebook. Victor said, "Do you guys pound the pavement, going from place to place, telling people about your business and handing out handing out business cards?" I did that I this know. week. I did that this week, Vic, Victor, and they said they would call me if they got any notaries. I am a walking billboard for my business mm -hmm. everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. People mm -hmm. stop me because on all my shirts, except one, I have my notary business information on the front and on the back. Mm -hmm. Only one of them, I don't have it on the back. So they're like, are you a notary? Or they see me get out the car. Mm -hmm. But I always get um, um, barbershops everywhere. Just walk in, just really casually. Hey, I'm Kimberly. I'm a mobile notary. Da -da -da. And that's it. That's it. It's Robert. It's Robert said drop, <laughs> drop bad toast. Google my business page. Working on it. Well, keep working on it. It's Roberts. Yes, Angela put a picture in there today. We looking for edible arrangements on our <laughs> right. page. We want it to look pretty. Yeah. DJS like toast. DJS says yes. I have made my initial investment back over and over. So yep. When you get the, the necessary supplies and you get your training. You're gonna make that over make that really quick. You should be profitable, in my opinion, just doing general notary work with your proper training and everything within two months. And yep. I know we have people in our Facebook group that have taken our courses, and once they make up their mind that they're gonna do what they need to do within the month, they're they start rolling. Ringing. We have one person right now. One day she did an I nine. One day she did ink fingerprinting. The next day, next day, and I was sitting there like, "Good night." She's doing loan signing. She did a yeah, of returning. I mean, just knocking it out the box. So she's not the only one. I mean, it's plenty of testimonies and great reviews in our Facebook group. You know, and everyone hasn't even taken our training. We just happy right. for people to win. Right. I don't ask people what training have you taken. Our Facebook group is open to everybody. If you have not joined, it's Notary Educators um, Facebook group, and you're more than welcome to join. We hit 800 over 800 today. So people are dropping gems in there. And like I said, you don't have to have taken our training to be a part of it. It's completely free. And um, yeah, so come on over. So and that's what I love about it. Everybody helps everybody. Everybody answers everybody's questions and share. And I really love because this is truly a Facebook group that nobody puts anybody down. Nobody says that's a stupid question. Nobody gets smart alecky with people. And I love it. And as long as you continue to be that way, we'll let you stay. 
But I love it. Everybody is so not good. They help each other. And everybody's like, it's really like one big family Facebook. And I really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to move on to my next point here. Because I got quite a few guys as I kept writing. I said, oh, my goodness. We're going to get to our questions too. But my next one is, are you volunteering too much for free? Are you giving your services away for free? I got to hear some in the comments about this one, guys. Are you doing too much volunteer work? I heard people talking about, I'm going to go set up here. I'm going to go set up there. I'm going to do a pop-up shop this and pop-up shop that. If it's not making me no money, I'm not saying I'm never going to do volunteer work or help somebody out with um, pricing of their jobs. But are you running a, a, a nonprofit or are you running a business? Nonprofits do make money, right? But most of us in this group, on this show channel, whatever you want to call it, we're not nonprofits where we're making money, right? We're actually a profitable business. So why are you giving away all your services for free? Again, you're not sitting up in no school for no two or three hours, sitting giving away free services. No, other notaries can pay you when they need to get something notarized. There's no need for you to be sitting in an apartment complex for a week, thinking somebody gonna come through there and give you all your money that you need after you gave them all your services. No, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Okay, so you may, you may, if you do something like that, like go to a school, you may want to reduce your price a right. little bit but you're not going to just totally give it all the way free right we're not sitting there all day we're not even sitting there for two hours for free under the pretense that somebody gonna give you some business next week don't forget people don't need notaries all day long right mm -hmm. well let me rephrase that they need notaries all day long people right mm -hmm. but at that apartment complex the, the chances that they're gonna call you every single day out there are very slim so i'm not sitting out there for four hours doing nothing or giving all my services away when i should out there when i should be marketing or i could be doing it like angela said reduce rate you have a deal with the manager at the apartment complex hey i'll be your go-to notary you can have your people call me and i will come here but just to be sitting there oh i hope somebody comes no nah, that's no 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 that's volunteer we're not doing that okay and again we're not anti-volunteering but we're not, we have to pay bills, right? So when Georgia Power or whoever your electric company is, they're not going to call you and say, oh, we heard you were down at the school helping out the kiddies today, so you don't have to pay. No, they want their money, right? So we got we got to bring it, guys. We got to think out the box. We can still help, but all this free stuff I'll be hearing about, mm-mm, mm-mm, got to get your money, all right? Next, do you have too many supplies? Are you just obsessed with buying a stuff while it's on sale <laughs> you can have too many supplies you buy an ink and tone you got five cartridges oh, i'm scared something gonna break down or oh, i need 200 packs of paper no just get mm -mm. what you need for at least a month maybe let's say a mm -hmm. month but other than that don't hoard all the paper and all your money's going over there and then you decide you know what i'm not doing long time right now i'm just gonna do general now you got all this paper i tell you something i don't think i ever told you this kim when I wasn't before you like made me do <laughs> loan signing, I didn't even I had one ream of paper in my office for like a year. I did not, but I I never went out and bought any paper. All I bought was all I really bought was ink pens and kept my stamp. Right. Ink. That's all I bought was ink pens and my notary journal. That's it. Right. I didn't buy paper. I didn't buy a lot of toner because I didn't need it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any of that stuff. Until I started long sign, I had a regular inkjet printer. I didn't, and Kim would know because I was looking for, I didn't buy a laser printer until I just started doing long signing. Right. I didn't have any she of that. She had to, right. Well, let me say hey and welcome to everybody that's joining us now and that will be on the replay. For those of you just joining us, we are talking about is your notary business profitable? And we're actually talking about some reasons why it's not profitable. Mm -hmm. But if you do what we tell you, then you're going to become profitable. <laughs> All right. And then I saw something really quick. I was going to hit this. Oh, signed by Cleisha said, that's a great question. She was considering doing some free notarizations for school documents at a library for three hours at the end of July. And then just asking people for Google reviews and tips. Nope. We're not working for tips. We are working for money. Okay. So I appreciate your kindness and generosity, Cleisha. And I'm not saying don't ever do it. But on the norm, I hear a little bit too much chatter about, oh, oh I did this pop-up thing, or oh, I did this. And they got pretty pictures. I mean, pretty pictures and stand set up, and everything's all color coordinated. I'm like, dang, that's really cute. But then I asked, how much money did you make? All of that costs money to set up. 
Right. It costs money to set up at the pop-up shop, right? And you spend, even if it's one or 200 and you make zero, that doesn't, the math does not add up. So what, so what Kim is saying is she's not telling you not to volunteer. So this is what she's saying. Don't have free and make no money. She's saying charge your prices and then you can always give people something too sometimes. Right. So it's more than you have your, have your set prices and sometimes you do give people stuff for free. Yeah. I do it. One way. Yeah, we all do. So it's yeah. more than one way to give. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said again, I just love we thank you guys for being here with us on the holiday. Thank you all so much for your well wishes. I see Brian saying, hey, yeah, you guys be safe out there. And thank you again for being here tonight. You, We said we're going to be here. If y'all here, great. You know, so we, yeah. we're going to have a lively conversation. So um, all that being said, though, again, I'm not saying don't mm -hmm. give stuff to veterans. I'm not saying don't help people out. Now, I give veterans discounts all day, every day. Yeah, elderly, all that. I'm not saying none of that, but I'm saying on the norm, I'm seeing all these cute little pop up things, and I'm just be thinking, are you making any money? All right, right. let's keep moving. <laughs> Buying too many products from other notaries. I'm gonna say it. I'm one of them, but I actually try to sell you stuff that you need. The training you cannot get away from, guys. You cannot. But when I say buying extra stuff, it could be whatever. Just because somebody gave you a cute little slogan or something, you gonna pay ten dollars for a slogan? Come on now. We right. got to think about this. We might be buying too much stuff that we just don't need. And I right. if you want to treat yourself or something, but to have everybody's product that just came out just because, you know, no. Let's think about what we're spending our money on, okay? I really want you to think about that. And again, I'm not anti-support my fellow notaries. I'm not. If you see something you want, fine. But on the norm, just buy every single product because there's a bunch of us out there selling things. So if you buy everybody's everything, it might get hard. <laughs> you might not have no money, y'all. So think about what you truly need for your business, though. Mm -hmm. You want to support somebody, and there's nothing wrong with that again. But I really want you guys to be profitable. And some of that money that we're spending on this other stuff, we need to be spending it on training. And then we'll have a little extra money once we become profitable to buy the little cute little pink this or purple that. Or save okay. some. And if you've taken training... Save. Save some so you can get your laser printer because laser printers are not cheap. They're very expensive these days. That was actually next on my list, Angela. I'm glad you said that. So this is something else that's very, very popular. It may not be popular what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it because I care about you guys. I hear about a lot of people. You can drop in the chat if you're doing it. Um, no shade here. No judgment zone. But people are renting printers. You're renting printers. You're renting your lifestyle. I don't believe in renting nothing. I own everything. I own okay, everything. that's old school. You own stuff. Don't rent. You pay somebody one hundred and fifty dollars a month for a printer to rent theirs when you might could buy one on the Facebook. I see people finding them for fifty yeah. bucks, two hundred dollars, or whatever, and you own it. It's yours. Right. When you rent something, people they can come and take it back. But not just anything. It. But not just that. It's really. Unless you're getting volumes and volumes and signing companies call for signing companies calling you every day, it's really a waste of money because when you think about renting something, you're paying 150 175 dollars a month. My toner costs 159 dollars. That toner lasts me for about six months. Okay. So if I was paying 169 dollars a month for my printer, look how much money I would be spending vice once every six months and every month. Once you invest in a printer that cost is gone if you pay three four five hundred dollars for it that cost is gone you won't have to pay for it every month like i said unless you are really getting volumes of signings you out five signings a day i mean this it's just don't equal your money you're wasting right. money and it's not profit it's not profitable if you're not making enough loan signings to pay for the cost yeah, and I've rented apartments. I've even leased a car. That was the worst mistake I ever made in my life. At the end of the lease, I paid $24,000 for that car. It was a two-year lease. I walked away with nothing. $24,000. I've done a lot of stupid, I mean, stupid <laughs> stuff with money. Okay, I'm going to write a book about that. It's coming soon. Not but me. All <laughs> I could write a book on the stupid stuff that I've done. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. So I, I, I'm thinking about that book, though. Anyway, 
All that being said, though, I released that. And I saw something yesterday on the news where people are leasing dogs. What? Then, yeah, leasing dogs. Girl, this, this family released two dogs for $3,000. But what they didn't realize in the fine print, in order to actually ever own a dog, they had to pay another $6,000. So people rent to own washing machines, um, anything. You can rent anything nowadays. But if you can, it's better to buy something, in my opinion, my little humble opinion, buy something a little bit older that you own. It is yours. I don't care if it's older. It's yours. They can't come and get it. You don't have to give it back, you know? So just think about that. That's part of overall financial health is owning stuff. Now it's going to take me to another one that's not going to be popular. It's all this business credit I keep hearing about. People are paying people to find out how to go in debt. Uh Uh-uh. That ain't making sense to me. Not me either. So why do you even need all this credit card? Why why do you need all this business credit for a notary business? You need a stamp, ink pad, what else? Receipt book, a journal, Journal. some trainer, certification from from your state. Under two hundred dollars. Why you need a whole fifty thousand dollar line of credit? Under the pretense you're gonna go buy a car and write it off to your business. I don't think so. Now, if that's the plan, it may work for some people, but for the average person, you don't need all this business credit card debt, and you ain't make no money yet. You made no money. And not only that, not only that, your notary business is instant cash. You don't have all that overhead. Mm-mm. Once you pay for your printers and stuff, it's paid for. And mm-hmm. so you why would you get business credit or owe people money when you get money every day? You get cash money every day, either through Zelle or credit card or cash. So what do you need all this huge amount of debt for that you're going to be paying for every month with interest? And again, I hear a lot of, well, I'm going to buy a car and I'm going to write it off to my LLC or I'm going to travel and write it off to my LLC. And I'm going to what? No, you better get... You might need an LLC and all that, right? But do you need all this credit card debt to under the pretense of I'm gonna write it off to the business and then like the business ain't making no money? So again, I just really want you guys to think about some of the stuff that that people are trying to tell you to do that you're thinking about doing. Whoever told you to do it, just think about it, okay? And then um, I had my list of things that I pay for. I'm gonna tell you right quick. It's not that much, really. I pay eight ninety nine a month for notary gadget. I do pay $2.99 for signingagent.com. That's where I get most of my loan signing stuff from. I do not pay for a website for my personal notary business yet. I may have to, depending on what's going on with this rumor about Google. So right now I do not, everything I have with Google is completely free. I rank it in the top three and that's because I really work in my page. And that means asking for reviews, posting on it regularly um responding to the people when they send when they leave me a, a review i, I respond, respond to every person so all of that kind of interaction triggers google and say hey something going on over there none better what's up what's up so um those are some tips to grow your google page okay to get mm-hmm. to in that top three pack that everybody wanted to get into so um angela anything else and i'm going to talk about the course really quick and then we're going to hit these um comments no the only thing i pay for i like i pay for my um notary gadget signing orders and um canva i pay 12.99 a month for canva oh i do pay for canva and I other do. than that i don't think i have any that's those are my ex- monthly expenses for my notary business yeah i do pay for canva there is a free version that is really nice but because i do so much with it i just wanted to go ahead and have access mm-hmm. to the um, pro version so and my square is- in the square account the square that's not a monthly fee, though. Oh, you know, I'm, am I thinking about when we had that other thing? Square is not monthly. That's just a per. Oh, when we were trying to do, when we were doing our event. Oh, okay. I don't even know if that, yeah, that was monthly. Yes, okay. to have that square set up. But that to have a square for your business is free. Mm-hmm. You pay per transaction, okay? Yep. The rumor with Google right quick is that they are, because um, I just that question just kind of stood out. Um, They are actually in the process of moving everything over to Google Maps. So the Google My Business app will be no more. But I don't know if that's also getting rid of the website. I think it is. So that just means everything you do will be based through the the maps, which is it's not hard to work. I've already done it. Alexis and I are actually going to do a video on it soon. So 
we could just show you all how to use it but it's really not a major change so um most people don't even look at my website i don't i don't know that they do or they don't that's why i said i haven't invested in creating one through godaddy for my personal yet i'm thinking about it though yeah angela so now when you pull up google maps you pull up the notary business or business it just have these you know dots with each business and, and where they are located so i noticed that yesterday when i pulled it up yeah, instead so of having to thing. actually view in the business it has this little you know teardrops with your you know dots with every notary business or whatever you're googling or whatever you're looking for it's like when you look for a place on the beach or somewhere and they have all these dots with what each place is that's mm -hmm. what that's how it's showing up now mm-hmm mm -hmm. So notary Shantae says she does have a gas card and office supply vendor and they pay for themselves. Okay. If that's what you feel you need, um, mm -hmm. gas card may not be a bad idea. Again, I'm just going to caution you on being careful with the um, debt and they use their business credit strictly for supplies. And just sometimes and another little tip that I've learned guys with money, you do spend more when you use credit. It's a, it's a proven, um, it's proven you spend 18 yeah. percent more when you use credit yeah. so again if i got my credit card i might go ahead and throw that extra whatever on there and i've done it i used to charge a pack of chewing gum but i was bad angela i was bad i would take my little friends out to lunch right i got my credit card mm. but then when i started using cash i was like well, wait a minute uh no 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 you can't order the same thing on my dime when I'm paying cash on credit, I'm like, oh, whatever, help yourself. See, I'm the opposite of Kim. When I'm using my card, I'm very careful because I know I got to pay for it later. But if I got some cash, I got $30, $40, I'm like, here, 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 here. You know, I, I look just, at it like free money, girl. I'll be like, here, card, yeah. card, 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 card. That's why I had to almost stop. I became like an addict. Again, that's another story. So Tempest another. said that uh, my wife absolutely charged me for being a witness. Yes. So before we get into comments, let me just get this little sales thing over right quick. So I got to tell y'all about my new course. I'm so excited. Yes, it's a new course. Heard, I released a new course today that's called General Notary Work. Don't be scared. It's not that complicated. And in that course, guys, literally, it's a couple hour course. And in that course, I tell you about how to do nursing homes, hospitals, jail signing, step by step, some of the documents you're going to see, power of attorney um trust documents i mean we're going over everything so by the time you do that course if you were frightened of general notary work you would not be scared anymore to celebrate the release of my new course all the courses have been put back on sale they are 50 percent off and i want you to check it out at notaryeducatorsllc.com mm -hmm. and they are all on sale i targeted to july 15th is the deadline for now i will let you guys know if something changes but everything is on sale half price so check them out okay we got to notarize like a pro i teach you how to notarize documents i have the i9 ink fingerprinting where i show you how to do both of those processes from beginning to end and make sure you know how to fill out that form correctly both of them very important how to build your business so everything is on sale and i did my math tonight and if you bought everything, let's just say no coupon code is needed. No coupon code is needed. I've already put the price in there for you. So all you got to do is click, click, click. Because I had a lot of people wanting to bundle. And there's not an option because everybody don't need the same thing. And I'm not big on just selling you stuff because I want to sell something. I want you to buy what you need. So I don't um, offer bundling on the courses with no coupon code. So you just click for what you need, okay? Um, so check those out, notaryeducatorsllc.com. Now we can get into the, the questions, please. So yes, start with um, Debbie Brown says, I got a job from a signing company this week for a seller package for only $50. I haven't been given a seller package and I want to do one badly. So I took it. And you know what, Debbie, that's okay. And that's what you do. You know, you take it, you get the experience. And when you get the experience, then you don't have to accept $50. But I think that was a great move. That's a good move to boost your business and make you more confident uh, when you're just starting out. So, yeah, kudos to you. I think so, too. Yeah. I think too. What time are you on, Angela? So I can follow 808. 808. Okay, good. Yep. Signed by Cleisha says, I charge $30 per person for my witnesses. Yep. And some VB said, Jeffrey needs to get paid. <laughs> yes, he will be getting paid, guys. Yep. Hi, everybody. Hi, Vernita. Signed by Cleisha says, Cleisha. 
says, Miss Angela, do you do the notarizations in your home or do you have an office? So I have people come to my home, but they do not come inside. Never, ever. I have a setup in my truck and in my car, in my garage. But recently, I don't think I told Kim this. So recently I got a little new setup to the side where I have this nice size table. I bought a big standing fan that I can plug in when it's too hot. And I have all my things set up. I actually used it the other day and it was oh, nice. nice. Set the table up. So when they come in, they can kind of, I did it because it's so hot. They can step in the garage out of the heat. And I have the fan on. So it's, it's a nice, com more comfortable. Okay. Angela, the upgrade over there. I have a little upgrade. So all things that Jean said, I haven't done an apostille because people don't want to pay. I don't even think I charge a lot. Well, I'll think that Jean, my thing about this is apostilles. If they don't want to pay, then it's not your customer. Everybody who called me for apostille, don't, they don't use me. Some of them come back because they see, you know, my price is a little better. But even with general notary work, if they don't call me, then that's not my, when I give them my price, that's my price. I think they come back to, to you, Angela, on a lot of stuff is because you're knowledgeable. They go and they start asking people, oh, how about ABC? And a person can't answer the question. And they like, you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It might be twenty five dollars, but they don't know what they're doing. Right. So they they know that they have to pay for quality work, and you mm -hmm. know what you're doing. And also, I'm glad you mentioned that, Kim, because when people call for notary apostilles or whatever, just because they're not going to use me, I help them. I'll give them answers to their questions. I'll tell them, you know, I told somebody. I even looked up something for somebody and sent them where to go because they thought my price was too high or whatever. But so, yeah, if you somebody call you it's because people's these documents are very important. And if you don't choose to use me. And you have a nice attitude, I'll still help you. I'll tell you what to go. I'll give I'll answer your questions. And if you don't come back, some of them do come back. But if you don't come back, I'm still OK with that. Right, right. Now, there is one lesson to be learned, guys. I had someone that was questioning me about apostille. Oh, that was, let, let tell them that story, honey. Literally, I'm not even exaggerating, period. I was with emailing them off and on for eight hours. That was ridiculous. So I asked myself, even in the beginning, I didn't like it. So I said, how did you find me? She said, on your YouTube video. Okay. So I'm like, is she just a notary trying to find out the process? I would have preferred you say, hey, Kimmy, I need some help with this. And I'm going to refer you to Angela because I'm, you know, depending on what it is with apostilles but anyway she says no she I, I asked her i said flat out some kind of way she's like no i'm a student over in the philippines i need to get these documents done okay fine so we're going back and forth literally all day and at the end she didn't do anything so i was listening to ty on one of her clubhouse um shout out to ty the abnormal notary and she said that she tells the price up front before she starts answering all these questions, right? Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, you know what? Um, that's what I'm gonna start doing in the future mm -hmm. because I spent too much time. Remember, Way I just talked much. about doing stuff for free, mm -hmm. even if it's an email here, email there, email it's here. It's too email. much. It was too much. I was drained. So that won't ever happen again. So part of my process with apostilles is that's I let them know upfront once I do a little screening with my questions give them an estimate if I can at that time, and then we'll proceed. But right. I'm not answering all your questions. on how Auxiliary to questions. Yeah, too much. Yeah. I wasted a lot of time that day. I was livid. And I told Kim, like, I'm like, what I do is that I'll ask you what country, the documents, and by that time, I'm going to tell you how much I'm charging. You're going to either use me or not. Right. Literally within five minutes. I can tell you. I'm not going to be answering your questions about what do you do here? What do you take here? Who gets it after? What do you, I'm not answering all those questions. Yeah, it was just too much, it, but it won't happen again. Mm -hmm. No worry. Live and learn. Okay. Next. So, so Frank says, uh, yes, I have 75 to hundred dollars per hour. This is my general notary work only. All the other side work have out for it. Frank, you know what you're doing, man. You got it. You got it. You got your pricing, yeah. right? Yep. You got to know how much you want to make per hour. Yep. Hi, Kim and Angela. Does the loan signing industry make you interested in being a real estate agent? The answer to that question, all things Nata Jean for me is no. My husband used to be a mortgage broker. I have no desire to be a real estate agent. Yeah, I have no interest in it either. Mm -mm. I wouldn't mind looking at all the houses all day, but I have no interest in it. But also, uh, we were talking about this just briefly a little earlier. So when you're a notary, you really have to be careful with being a loan signing agent 
because you really can't cross those two avenues when it comes to the company. So you really have to be careful about that and make sure you're not crossing the lines with the companies that you're actually involved with or may be involved with in the future and actually being a notary for that. So you have anything to say about that, Kim? I don't. I just agree with what you said. Mm -hmm. And so um, fine line. I think Natalie Jean said being a notary is like being a judge. You got determined. You got to make decisions. Facebook you got for you, Angela. Yeah, I'm here and say it's a question for you over there. How do you charge when they come to your home? So I just charge them less. I just have a flat. I, I literally, if it's just one or two notarizations, literally, I just charge them. And it depends on who it is. Because if you're an older person and if you're a veteran, yeah, I may not believe this, but I'm going to like almost give it to you for little or nothing. I had a veteran came over here the other day. I had already charged her a little cheap price. I took $10 off her price. I'm like, you're a veteran? I said, you got $10 off. And she's like, for real? I'm like, yeah, girl, for real. And old people, I do that to them if they come to the house. So, Because I'm not using any gas. It's just a convenience because you're right here. So, yeah, I don't charge them. Like my $40 to leave my house fee, I don't charge them that at all. And we have another question. How do you grow your this on Facebook? How do you grow your business um, when you work a nine to five? So we talked about that a little bit about if you're going to do ads to make sure that you only do them for the time that you're going to be available, like after five or on the weekend. Or you, you may just be a weekend notary because Google has it where you can put your hours. So when people Google notary near me, you know, your hours are on there. And so they'll see what it'll either say closed or open. And so you can also put that on Google when you are actually open, which would be on the weekend or after five or before 10. I've done notaries at seven or eight o'clock in the morning. You know, I, 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 this is all I do notary, but I've done notaries at seven or eight o'clock in the morning. So just make sure that even on Google, the hours that you're working, that you put, I don't, that on Google is kind of different because, you, you don't want to exactly put five to 10. You may want to put like three because you may be able to schedule it for five. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. That's but with true. the ads, I would not put the ads for anything outside of when I'm going to actually be working. Even with long signing, you might look into making sure you take those jobs if you're a long signing agent or notary signing agent, whatever term you want to use. If it says TBD, that means to be determined. So you take those jobs, they get the you get the assignment at three. Well, you know, you get off at five, you might just schedule it for six. So, you know what I'm saying? You have a little leeway there. So you kind of gotta know how to play the game, for lack of a better way to put it. And and also so, with the loan signing, the good thing about that is when you sign up with these companies, they ask what hours you're available. And so if you say from seven to ten in the morning or five to nine. And there, believe me, there are signings at seven o'clock and eight o'clock. There are signings at seven o'clock in the evenings and eight o'clock. I've done both. So that's still an opportunity for you to get jobs. So if you, when you sign up for the loan signing and you are companies and that's the only time you can work, put those hours because they do need people to work outside of the normal working business hour, nine to five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They do. If you guys would do me a huge favor and like and subscribe if you have not subscribed to the channel and hit the up thumb thingy for me, I'd appreciate it. That let Google, I mean, that lets YouTube and Google know that, hey, if something happening in Notary Life with Kimmy. Right. Which it is, right? We dropping gems. We dropping knowledge. <laughs> All right. What's next? Um, so, Danielle Edwards says, what questions for the estate planning? So, Danielle, what you want to ask for estate planning when they say, I need you to notarize something. You're going to ask them what documents they have. They say, I have the estate documents. So you're going to ask them how many documents you have. Because sometimes a state plan can be four or five, or like when I went, it could be 14. If they don't know, you can say, how many notary stamps do you think it, it is? How many, or how many signatures do you think it is? Because if you ask them how many signatures you think it is, that can also give you an idea of how many documents there are. Because the state planning package that I did, most of them did not have more than two or three signatures, two signature average per document. So if somebody says I have about 25 signatures, that can give you an idea of how many documents you got. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to push back on my course, guys. That general notary course is the bomb.com. It, it really myself, is. 
I give you everything. You guys know how we teach over here. I give you everything you need to know to be a boss when it comes to trust documents, estate planning, um, the questions you need to ask, the little takeaway sheet in there. Um, it's just it's just a really nice course. Mm -hmm. So you need to get even a little training in that. What are you looking for out there? Well, you can have a little knowledge that that's why I talked about. I didn't I didn't actually talk about it, but paying for training. Um, that's something that's going to make you profitable if you choose the right kind of training. Okay, mm -hmm. it's very important. So everybody got a course. I got a course. You got a course, right? The point is, look at the YouTube channel. Do you even understand that? If you don't understand that, and right. they like not giving you all the um the knowledge there, and then the details. what do you expect to get from the course? I mean, right. you know, what I'm saying? let's just kind of think about that. Right. So my point being is, you gotta have to spend a little bit in order to grow your business. There's no way around it. Either mm -hmm. you're gonna pay for knowledge. Or are you going to do it yourself? You're going to self-teach yourself. But either way, you need to know your craft. You need to know how to stamp. You need to know how to price. You need to know about the environment, how to navigate a hospital. If you're scared, you ain't going to go there and do it. Mm -hmm. So again, that's why the general notary course is called Don't Be Scared. I got you. I'm going to show you how to do it beginning to end. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. What's next? Like S. Robert says, questions equal money. Yes. Questions, questions equal, equal money. money. Questions I equal money. All day. That's me. Yep. That's me. Signed by Cleisha says, this weekend my friends tested out my website and to make sure I was prepared and one understood the assignment very well. So I've created a quick template of follow-up questions to ask. Great. And that's another thing about Questions equal money. Each time, especially if you're a fairly new notary, each time you get a call, maybe you want to write down the questions you ask or some things you may have forgotten to ask. And after you come from the assignment and you didn't feel you didn't price right or price properly, then you also may want to write down questions you should have asked and things that happened with that signing or extra things they had so that you can write down questions so you can ask it next time so you can make sure that you do price right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Tempest said, thank you for sharing your experience. You're welcome. Ironically, I charge $80 for estate. I'm fairly due how an attorney paid $120. Next time, I'm confidently charging higher. Yep, Tempest. He was, that was good of him. He realized the value, and he realized your value and the value of those documents. So that's probably why he paid you more. And you take my notarized um, general notary course, you're going to be even more confident because you're going to have an inside scoop as to what happens at a will signing, what mm -hmm. happens with the power of attorney signing, what happens when they need to have a trust completed? You know what I'm saying? So all mm -hmm. that confidence and training equals dollars. Right. Okay? And think about it. If you understand what you're doing, that's what gives you your confidence. And as you continue, the more you continue to do it, that's what builds your confidence. And so that's me, Kim, anybody on this live. If you don't know how to do something, you don't feel confident doing it. You don't feel comfortable doing it. But when you know how to do something, your confidence gets stronger as you keep doing it because you get more training after you've been trained. You get more training and your confidence boosts and builds as you keep being more successful in it. And a lot of notary signing agents are terrified to death of general notary work. You spend all this money on all this equipment and everything and you're terrified of general notary work. Mm -hmm. you don't need to be afraid anymore i promise you my course is gonna help you don't be scared <laughs> joanne, right, joanne says is an electronic i9 easier than a regular i9 no i would say no <laughs> i've done both and the no. thing about electronic i9 is is that you have to get your i will never ever ever do it for somebody who comes to me and is on their phone oh that's never, the worst right. thing you can do oh never angela but anyway, uh, electronic i nine. I would say that it's it's harder. It's more you have more things to do because you have to upload the person's uh, ID. And when they ask for another, just thing is that when they ask for your document number, it's the social security number. It's not the document because the social security card also has a document number, and you have to fill everything out online. So uh, online is a little bit. It takes me longer to do online than it does to do on paper. What about so, you? It actually depends on the company because I had I charge more for electronic i9s because they tend to take longer, right? Mm -hmm. It's not complicated, but they just take more take time. The person has to look for their password, then they got to send you an email, then you got to say you received the email, right? 
So it just takes more time. But I had one two weeks ago. I talked about it on the live last week where I actually had charged her more. And it was literally one click and I was done. So I did not change my price. I started to and say, oh, you can give me less money. But I was like, no, she don't pay for all the other times that the other people, I took more time with them and didn't get compensated. You know what I'm saying? So mm. I didn't change my price. But so it just depends on the company. But normally, um, electronics take longer and I would add a $10 surcharge, at least, mm -hmm. if not more. But normally at least $10 for I-9, yeah. uh, electronic. Mm. Next, Angela. It says plus the tap for cards. I don't know what that means. Tap. Probably I don't know. Oh, or does she mean like the no touch card? Probably. Payment? Okay. With cash, can we do one big deposit? We answer that. I do one deposit. It just depends on if you want to go every week. Uh, somebody you know this is no not having to use ads. Oh, DJS said I not on the computer is awesome. Paper is good too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's Alexis shout out. We said that again. Said that. So Tempest says, I have Thumbtack because I do wedding elopements, but I have a prepaid card for the leads. And when I get it, the, the, she deposits it and it goes to her business account. So there's just so many different ways that you can do your deposits. Yeah. Notary Need says, guilty, I need to start depositing cash and keeping change. Write it down, make it plain, speak it into existence. Facebook user. All righty, next. Uh, that might be something we already kind of talked about. Yeah, they liked your weekly check in, Angela. Yeah, that's yeah, I mean, for her t shirt with a pocket full of cars in the supermarket. Yeah, that's great. We did that question from Victor already. Yeah, see, oh, wait, CC's question was, How do you both market for estate planning documents other than Google My Business? That's I all know. I do. That's all I do. That's all I do. Now, you could find attorneys in your area. That's going to look like um, people that practice elder law, like the elderly, mm -hmm. um, estate planning attorneys. There is such a thing, mm -hmm. uh, such a role out there and market mm -hmm. to them. Yep. You already have a notary on staff. And don't let that be a deterrent because the notary on staff is not going to somebody's house. They're not right. going on the weekends, evenings, or is it a hospital, mm -hmm. you know, or the nursing home. So don't let that deter you. Yep. Uh, next. Carla says she moved like me. Yep. Carla, you don't do all that other excess stuff. Frank said hit the thumbs up, share the love. Yes, hit share, like. Yes, thank y'all. Carla buys, uh, prints the state farms from her uh, state website, which is a great move. We have a question on Facebook. How many witnesses do you suggest? I think, uh, I don't know what they're referring to, but I think we should talk about a witness list. Maybe, Angela, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so a witness list. I suggest having like at least four or five people that you can call in case one person is not available. But for witnesses, you want to have somebody that's reliable, somebody that's available. No one who goes to work from nine to five, of course. And so when you have witnesses and people call you, a lot of people do not have witnesses in general notary work. You more than more than more than not, they don't have witnesses. And so when you tell them you have a witnesses available, you know, and they have to pay the witnesses a charge of twenty five or thirty dollars, uh, they are happy they got somebody because they they too know that the document can't be notarized without a witness. Uh -huh. And I have people that have called me back just because they know I have witnesses available. Uh -huh. So yeah, I, I would suggest having four at least four people that you can call. What about you, Kim? Yeah, I do too. I always have me some witnesses. I, I even try to do this. If I know I'm going east, I got me a few people I yeah. might can call over there. I'm going west. I know I got me a couple people over this way. And worst, worst case, guys, if you don't have a witness list, notary near me. Yeah. I'm just like a regular client. When I'm looking yeah. for a witness, if I don't have one that day, because I've had to do that before, yeah. I found a notary and she was super cool. She shared mm -hmm. somebody from her witness list with me. That's just me and Angela's term to call it a witness list. There's nothing formal out there in this right. world, but we just call it a witness list, and that's called being a boss. Having right. your, if somebody calls us for anything, we can provide it. That's a service. So I don't yeah. charge an extra fee for that, but that just means I'm going to get the business because some signing companies will tell you you must provide yep. the witness in order to even get the assignment. Yep. They've gotten slick. They're like, why are we going to go out there and look for somebody? Let the notary find somebody. Right. So, um, or again, they just don't want people in their business. Some of mm -hmm. the uh, clients, they, they didn't have a neighbor. 
But they mm-hmm. don't want the neighbor to know they're doing a refi, getting all this money back or selling their house. Right. We're like, can you provide it? Or they got they got a trust from someone, you know what I'm saying? Inher inheritance or something. So um, yeah, have a witness list. That way you look like the pro notary that we know you guys are out there. So again, if you don't have anybody, no worries. Mm-hmm. Start Googling notary near me. Look for right. five stars. What do you look for in a notary? What do you look for in any business? I'm looking for five stars. I'm looking at the pictures. I'm looking to make sure they look legit. You know? So same thing you're looking for. That's what you're going to... Somebody looking up... When you're looking for anything, that's what you're looking mm-hmm. for in a notary to help yeah. you with the assignment. Um, Mel Time says she loves your videos and they're so informative. Tanya Bruton says, how do I join your Facebook group? So, Tanya, our Facebook group is Notary Educators. And make sure you answer that last question about do you agree to the group's rules? A lot of people, quite a few people, we decline with an explanation because they don't answer that last question. But you just go to Notary Educators on Facebook to join. Mm-hmm. DJ, so your notary buddy might be able to give you jurors and acknowledgements. Most state sites uh, have the jurors and acknowledgements on the website for free. Free. Yeah. Free. <laughs> free, free, free. Free, free. So do you feel that the majority of the notary information is geared toward California notaries? So all things, Natajine, now the NNA is based out of California and it started in California. So even though it's um geared toward california they do for every state so a, a lot of stuff is california you are right but yeah, they can yeah. answer questions for any state yeah they can but they do focus on california, california I, mean, yeah. I would say 90 percent. but they 90%. you call from any state they they got your back but right. yeah they're in california so yeah that's what they focus on and you our training some- this fyi is for all 50 states yeah. Yes, Angela. What you say? You Facebook got some questions on Facebook. Uh, I didn't see anything. You can keep going. Okay. Uh, somebody said they don't be giving away their pins. They cringe. Dollar Tree. Yep. Have any tried Popple? Have any tried Popple? P O P L. What's Popple? It's that um, like electronic digital card. It's all the rage now. That's one of oh. the things I was asking you about. Do you have to have a Popple? Do you really have to have a Popple? Right. Um. So I'm where did you print old-fashioned business cards? I mean, pop on my. Then so what it is, you can just electronically drop your stuff to people. Oh, that's okay. Good. That's good. It's a monthly. Fee. Oh, because somebody was saying in the last slide that they tried to drop it, but they couldn't drop it or something. Is that what? Is well, that, that was for iPhone. This is oh, okay. actual, It's like another device you wear, or or you can put it on the back of your phone. It looks like a little like those little things that hold the phone. Cell phone. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And mm-hmm. you can electronically send your information to people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's all fine. If you can afford it, sure, why not? But if you are just starting out, you don't have no business. You ain't going to be buying all the extra. Know, Papa, I don't know if you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> so, Valerie T says, where did oh, you oh, make- Angela, We had one from Facebook. Stephanie, let's not okay. for Stephanie said, I'm sorry, right after you asked, Stephanie said, just asking, is being a, gr- a witness a great way to learn the business in action while making money? It's an yep. excellent way. Excellent way. That's what we recommend to take those witness jobs from the signing companies. They may mm-hmm. only want to pay you 25, but take a few of those just to get your feet wet. And then eventually you can even start. I got paid um three weeks ago for a witness job, $65. I was there for 10 minutes. That was yeah, I got company. paid about a couple of weeks ago, $40. I was, and it was like two miles down from my house and I got paid $40. They couldn't find anybody. So it was like last minute. So I was like, I'll go do it. And we're and we not just Kim and I, but we always see people putting in our Facebook group need a witness. So that's a good way. You're right. That's a great way to learn the business. Earn and learn at the same time. Love so it. Valerie T says, where did you ladies purchase your laser printer double stack? What's the name? So I have a brother laser jet printer that I got from Office Depot. Uh, I have a brother's and an Epson. I have a brother's and an Epson. My big one at home is, a, it's not that big. I can't show you, but it's an Epson. And my big brother's dual tray. And then my other one is a um, brother's too, yeah. my mobile. And in worst case, guys, it's a couple apps that you can use on your phone. Cam Scan is one. And then somebody gave us one last week. You remember the name of it, Angela? This what? Is the phone, oh, the, the, um, it was the, orange, phone the orange app. Yeah, for scanning. I forgot what it is. Join the Facebook group and you'll find it. Yeah. Because I don't remember the name of it, but I use Cam Scan all the time. 
Um, yeah. Nikki said this um, comment too. She said she cringes when someone asks for her EPN. <laughs> We passed that already, girl. Oh, we did. Where are we at now? Because I thought that was eight twenty nine. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna go through these really quick, you guys. Uh, signed by Cleisha says schools we got about to begin. She started marketing the parents at the park, daycares, apartments, rec center. Hope that you get the business beginning school. That's a great idea too. Elementary schools on her street. Yep. Doc T said uh, really enjoyed your training last week and been applying pressure to this business. Great. Oh yay. We enjoyed you too. Yeah. And S. Robert says she loved the kindness and never been on Facebook before. Uh, oh, S welcome. Yeah. Signed by Cleisha says she was considering doing free notarizations for school documents in the library one day, three hours. We've been over that one with her. Yeah. yeah. Do you recommend partnering with other notaries? Oh, yeah. We, we recommend everybody having a notary buddy. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and you guys, having a notary buddy, if you can't do something and somebody call, you can call your notary buddy. That still makes you look good. Kim, tell me about the experience you had where you sent me the lady and she called you back or something. Okay, so I don't remember exactly what Angela talked about, but we do this so much <laughs> that I give them to I refer Angela because I can't do it for some reason, but they always come back to me. Yeah. They and always we re we refer they each always okay, but yeah, yeah but 99% of the time they remember, oh, Miss Angela did it for me before, but I was their main contact. They never, right. you never get your first. You never get your first. Your first child, yeah. first whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm the first contact. Yeah. Notary introduction. So I send them to Angela. They always mm -hmm. gonna call me back. Yeah. And then if they ask me about something, they want to do another job. I said, call Kim. You know, she'll do it. She'll take care of you. And so when you have a, a notary buddy and you do what we do, like Kim has had people call her back and say, Oh, thank you for referring me to her. You know, she was great and she did a great job. And so you want to also make sure you got somebody who's gonna do the same job that you would do. That happens so much, Angela. That's why it doesn't stand out for me because we do that all day long and people always come back and say what great service you provided. So I love that you just ended with that because I have no doubt that when I send my person to Angela, she's going to handle it like I would if it is not better. I have no doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, right. What's the fast way to grow your clientele? So we talked about that. Any South Carolina notaries, Tempest is asking... Uh, Tempest is in South Carolina. So signed by Cleisha says the math is not mathing. <laughs> she said the math is not mathing. <laughs> That's, That's funny. Well, We're going to have to help you get that math to start mathing. <laughs> right. And so <laughs> I did. Put on the contract card if you have not already. I don't remember if you did or not because it's a weekend. But um, if you need a phone call to find out where you need to be at in your business, fill out a contact card at notaries, notaryeducatorsllc.com. And we will call you back to see what class you need or uh, which online class you need or which, what you need um, in person. We want to get you in the right product. And that way you can, your business will grow. We ain't just selling products. Mm -hmm. Next. Uh, should you expect a fellow in order to pay you? Yes. I ask because they make it a point to tell you over and over their notary. I take that. They want it for free. So I have notaries. I've had notaries call uh, call me for notaries. I had somebody from my Facebook group call me for a notary. And what you charge is, is you, your business. I usually don't charge them the full fee because they come to me. I had someone come to me this week that was a notary and an educator. So I just told her to give me $10. And so she was very appreciative, gave me a really good review. So it's up to you. You guys, this is your business. You run your business the way that you choose to run your business. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Quite honestly, I don't normally charge other notary stuff. Um, I do. I've had that happen a couple times. I have not. I don't like somebody to try to play me either, but I did. Um, I was a witness for my in-laws and that attorney who was also a notary, she needed some documents done and I was going to do them for her for free. She actually paid me very well for doing it. And I was so appreciative because I was like, oh, no, you don't have to pay me anything. She was like, oh, no, yes, I do. And I really appreciate that. So I'm actually going to start charging. Um, my friends even more i had a little rule sometimes for some of my people if they come to me i won't charge them but i think i'm gonna i'm gonna change that you know why because as we talking about earlier the whole show tonight was about being profitable i'm running a business okay i have friends and i value their friendship but at the end of the day again georgia power is not going to say oh you were being nice to your friend and then i find out that they have all these other luxuries that they can afford so you yeah they can afford me if you can't go to your bank 
you know, and I'm not getting ready to be mean about it, but I'm just going to be a little bit more business about it because this is my business for this is like my living nowadays. I have no other income before I did have another side job, but right now I actually have nothing else. So once my husband always said, Kim, you're not hungry. Jeff mm -hmm. always said, you're not hungry. Cause I don't price, you know, if I'm being too, too generous or something, mm -hmm. you ain't hungry enough. Right. But now I'm getting hungry, you know, so that's going to change the way I interact with people. So can I cut them a little deal? Maybe. Yeah. But yeah. Maybe you need to go to your bank if you, cause I provide a service. So I'm really processing that very, yeah. very hard. Cause and I have the reason yeah. The reason why I charge people, notaries, friends even, except for certain friends, um, is because my brother is like a beast as a businessman. He's had a restaurant, shoe store. Now he's a contractor. And so when he had a restaurant in a shoe store, you know, it's eight siblings. And imagine if all eight of us went into his restaurant three or four times a week and ate a meal for free. Do you know how much money he would be losing? So as his siblings, even though he would try to, you know, give us food for free, we never accepted it. We go to the cash register and said, charge me. You got a family rate. You can give me that. We refused to let him give us free food because he was running a business. He had a shoe store. We refused to let him give us free shoes because he was running a business. And so it's just like if you're a hairstylist, would you give your everybody who come there related to you a free hairdo because they're your relative? No, you're running a business. And so yeah. you got to be like a business. You not just a Johnny off the street sort of thing. You're running a business. Yeah. So I'm I'm really about to focus and hone in on that because I've I've been doing a little bit too much with that. And I'm I'm having it. You know, I don't want to get to I always feel like this. If it gets to a point where I'm feeling a certain way about it, then I have to change my plan because you'll see it in my face. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of the people that can fake it. Either I'm with you or I'm not. <laughs> So I don't want to be like that. You know, I don't want to talk about it later and be like, oh, I shouldn't have did that. Right. You know? So I'm, I'm going to get a back phone. That's what I'll be telling Angela and Jeffrey. So we're going to run through these real quick. Hold on, so real JC, quick, hold on JC, one second. Go ahead. Hold on. Ladero said, hey, ladies, I'm back from his summer business. I wonder where you were because I've been reaching out. What is up? Yeah, Ladero. We was... And Welcome Steph back. We set out a contact card for a session. So we will be in touch. Um, yeah, Ladero, I said, I called you for a job the other day. I said, where's Ladero at? All right, Angela, I'm, sorry. I'm ready. Sorry. So JC Majestic says, I'm getting his every day now doing general notary work. Long sign has slowed up for me because I'm not taking those one and two hour travel signings. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no. DJS says, should you expect a fellow notary to pay you? We did that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, they should expect. S. Robert said, yes. See, man, S. Robert's on the same page. It's business. And S. Robert says, let's not be cheap, cheap and run the business in the ground. And that's a good point. You can run your business in the ground by not charging people. And so that's we, why that was one of my questions on there. Are you not, are you pricing your services too low? Right. Is and that so, why you're not profitable? And are you profitable can go into, are you giving your relatives and friends free notary services? Guilty. <laughs> so uh, she got a, who's, it's best to get a tablet. Not good business. Oh, not good yeah, business. Earlier, uh, one more thing we skipped earlier about the pop-up shop. Mm -hmm. They were asking, can you put that on your taxes? There may be a way for you to put that on your taxes. But again, I'm not trying to write off everything for myself personally. Again, I go back to the illustration when you get ready to pay your bills. They ain't waiting until tax time to get their money. That's a whole nother year later. Mm -hmm. I need some money in my pocket right now. So you may be able to write that off on your taxes. I don't know. So Renisha Hall said, what's the best advice for a person just starting out? So Renisha, give us, go to notaryeducatorsllc.com and do the contact me, contact us button. And shoot us your phone number and we'll call you and we'll talk you through it and what you need to do. Mm -hmm. D Doc DJ said it hurts my heart to see people selling courses on getting business credit card loans, buying G Wagons for new first time entrepreneurs. And you're right, Doc DT, because you don't have money to pay. That's a monthly bill. They don't tell you about the bill and the insurance and all that stuff that goes with it. Yeah. Be it's frugal and buy your and buy notary need says be frugal, but get your own. Yeah. And JC Majestic said respond to the calls. Mm -hmm. uh, we what room with Google? Card. We did that love Canva uh -uh. minimum for business. Hello, everyone. Hey, welcome, Joanne. She's first time from listening from California. Hey, welcome. Mm -hmm. Brian, Hello, you everybody. have to drop us the knowledge in there about that um, so, uh, North Carolina. I love it. Keep on doing it. So you said you were trying to get your EIN, and what happened? Oh, as an owner and IRS gov, want my social. Would they not still issue me an EIN? Yeah, you do have to give your personal social to get an EIN number. That's true. 
Yep. That's true. There's no, I didn't see a way around that. They do want your personal number to get an EIN number. That is correct. Yeah. So you, Eugene Hash says, do you need your scanner to be a duplex scanner? Kim, you want to answer that? I don't. No, you don't. You can work with a single tray. You can. Um, Leah, the notary, has a good video on that. Leah, Bossa with Leah, has a, a video she did about using a single tray. I've never used one. I don't think it would be my preference. It's just too, too much work for me. But if you have to, to get started, I don't see anything wrong with it. And they got something else called page separator. Yeah, that um, page separator is awesome. Angela has used that. And all mm -hmm. that is, is like if you got legal and letter in a package, pages 8, 9, and 10 might be legal size. So then you would just pull out 8, 9, and 10 and then put it where it needs to go in the pack. No? So what page separator does is you put the document in, open up, then you go to page separator. It'll tell you pages one through four are legal, page five and six is, you know, long, letter, letter size. So you can either print out all the letter size or print it out as it tells you what's legal and what's letter. So, but it's, it's really easy and I think it's great. So uh, Notary Shante says she have a few hospitals and nursing homes that put her on speed dial. So she's marketed to nursing homes and hospitals and it's working for you guys. Teresa Thomas says, do I need this course if I bought your book and did the 4L? What's 4L? Hmm. Hmm. Well, oh, if you did all four? If you did all four courses? Wait a minute, if I bought your book. If you bought the book, and the courses are two different things. So the courses are, of course, more deep. And it's you and I in a room talking about whatever this topic is. So it's way more involved than the book. You can build your business, sure, by doing a book. But if the book is not training. The courses are actual training how to do whatever topic it is that we're talking about. Miss CC Clark said, so "How much is the new course, uh, Kim?" It's on sale. Um, 50, is it fifty-seven? I think it's fifty-seven. Teresa says she did the four for twenty-four fifty classes. You got a deal, Teresa. Yeah, I told you. I pray. I kept. I kept telling y'all. I said, "Get the class. Get the class. Get the class." Yeah, they're up a little bit more now, but the value is still there. I have no problem with the prices that we're charging now. I, I have no problem because I know the value is there. You're going to make, and that's if you take advantage of this sale, which is until June 5th, July 15th. Um, they're 57 for the one course. The brand new one is 57, and then the other four are 47. And your first I-9 or your first fingerprint job is going to more than pay for that course. And you want to be do all of those things that we talk about like a pro. Mm -hmm. So Notary Shante says, uh, to me, my opinion, if you know your state laws, do the work and answer your phone. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. uh, Tonya Br Bruton said, is it okay to use Square checking as my bank account? What would be the risk in doing that? So that's a personal business decision. Square yeah. checking is, is a bank. Square checking. I mean, I haven't used it. I have a regular bank account. I don't know what the risks are, but people do use Square checking as their bank account. You have any thoughts on that, Kim? I don't personal preference. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Square offers credit too now, so Square is on the come up. <laughs> yeah, Square is really on the come up. They want to be one stop. So right. I, I love Square, so I, I love I Square too. Have a problem doing it. I honestly I like a major player for my bank. Um, not that Square is not, but I prefer a brick and mortar. I like to be able to walk in and if I got to. So Missy uh, Mayfield says, "I'm taking your general notary course. Once done, reading your book is so informative." Yes. It's very informal. Hi, Lynette Donaldson. Thank you. Hey, Lynette. Uh, face the Facebook says, "Do I charge per stamp if they come to my home? How do you price that?" I did do that not one. charge for we stamps. Did that one, oh, we, we did. did. That mm -hmm. You Question. can talk about it some more if you want to, but we well, did I just it. don't charge per stamp. I just have a flat fee. Uh, well, JC, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead, Andrew. JC Majestic says, "Question: What other fees can you charge when they come to you besides the five to ten stamp per state requirements?" I don't charge all that different. I just charge a fat flea, flat fee for my notary services. I don't charge per stamp. Our stamp is $2 a stamp. And so I don't even charge that. I just charge a flat fee. And like Kim always says, everything, my gas, my time is always part of that flat fee. So I don't say I'm charging you $10 for this, $5 for this, $2 for stamp. I've already had that figured out in my head. Mm hmm mm hmm the link the said, courses. Oh, oh, hold on. Go ahead. ahead. Ladero said one of the best business lessons he learned was don't steal the peas. A quote from Nelson Nash. Now you're gonna have to explain, explain that. Explain that, Ladero. 
Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> so what is the link for your courses? It's notaryeducatorsllc.com. They are on sale. You want to drop it? You want to drop the link yeah, in the chat? Yeah, I can. Uh -huh. So JC Majestic said, I had a person grill me with the possible questions as well, but no return contact. I think a lot of times is my competition trying to see what I know. That is so true. I've had somebody do that to me recently, but I don't let them drill, grill me. You got like two questions to ask and I'm done. Do and you that makes me upset. I'd rather you just call me and say, hey, Kimmy, I'm a fellow notary. I have a question. Don't call me grilling me trying to find out what my prices is because that's going to really irritate me when I get to the end and know that that's what you were trying to do. So Debbie Brown said, do you take jobs that come in and want it done in an hour? I'm staying in Long Island for now. But I find that signing companies do that a lot. How do you handle it? Signing companies do do a lot, give you last minute jobs, email last minute. And so it's just like making a choice if you're going to do it or not. I don't stress myself out about things. If it's too much for me and it's an hour, 30 minutes, if I don't want to do it, I don't do it. So, yeah, sign, that's not unusual for signing companies to, you know, since uh, assignments and said it's four o'clock and say this is assignment for five o'clock. I'm sure they know you're not going to get there by five o'clock because you got to print right. the documents out and get there. So, but yeah, you have to decide, especially being in Long Island, you have to decide about your travel time and how much it's going to take to get over there. That's a lot. So, yeah. And then I usually accept it and then I'll just let them know if they call me, if they put it out there for three and it's already 2.59, hey, I could be there by 4.30 or whatever. But I'm mm -hmm. allowing myself time to do what I need to do. So right. I may not turn down the money. But I'm going to go about it and make sure it fits my plan. So right. they're not going to rush me out. They know you can't be there, like Angela said. If it says 3 o'clock, it's 2.59. They already know you can't be there for 3. Right. So make so it work. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress out about if you want to take a signing and it's 3 o'clock and they say it's have to be there at 4 o'clock. If you want to take it, take it. And if you live in Long Island, they know it's going to take you two hours to do it, get wherever you're getting anyway. So. Mm -hmm. As Robert said, do you let the message often be live on my Google My Business page? I do let the message the message often I be do live. Too. I do. I do. So Mel Times in Illinois, we can only charge a dollar for certain documents like jury acknowledgments, etc. How can I charge anything more, especially if I don't tra have to travel anywhere? So you still have convenience fees. You got to read your state handbook and make sure. Because I was talking to another notary from another state. And it was funny because she and I read, um, just say it said $5 per stamp. That's it. And then as we kept reading, it said, however, you may charge a nominal expense fee for something. So we was like, ah, that's your out. That's what you can do to get your money. So it gave it gave her that little tip there. So if your state does not say you cannot charge anything else, then you might call it a convenience fee. You still have fees associated. If they come to you, if you go to them, there are fees. If they come to you, you have light, gas house insurance, apartment insurance, you still have fees associated. For your stamp to come out of your bag, a fee was associated with that. Something happened. It cost something. If it cost you your time, it cost you coming away from your TV show that you was watching and now they needed something stamped last minute and they could have went to their bank or they could have went to UPS and now you got to stop watching your favorite show at 8 o'clock at night. It cost something. Yeah. So Debbie Brown says, I was going to do real estate because I was scared to do notary. I decided to not be scared to jump in. I have a signing tomorrow afternoon for a California lot line adjustment and she's scared. <laughs> <laughs> so Debbie, <laughs> don't be scared. Fear will keep you broke and fear will keep you standing in the same spot and not moving. If you've yeah. taken training, if you've been doing general notary work, I mean, it's Kim. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips because we'll be here all night with that. And we're getting ready to wrap this up. So Debbie, for tomorrow, fine. You know, I don't know what training you took. If you can reach out to whoever you train with, that's what I'm going to first recommend. If you cannot get in touch with that person for some reason, your main role out there is to identify the client, collect signatures, um, and write it in your journal, stamp, sign, and go. Um, other than that, it should be easy peasy. You know, again, if you spend money on training somewhere, start there. Um, but that's what I'm gonna give you for tonight. Just kind of prepare your documents, go through yep. each page, look and see where they have to sign it. Explanation is not that much because you are not there in that role. And um, keep it simple, keep it simple. 
you have on speed dial whoever gave you the assignment call them if you have questions that's who's paying you that's who want it done correctly mm -hmm. so if you have questions you reach out to them that's your main right. contact not even yeah. who you trained with right. start with whoever gave you the package that's who has set the expectation your trainer doesn't really know anything about the ins and outs of your instructions okay right you know, they're all about the same but start with the person that gave you the assignment and that's who you're going to be contacting with if it's something you don't know if it's something basic you think you should know and you don't then you might want to google what right. is abc start right. googling make it till you make it on this because you, you right now it's crunch time so ain't no other way to go about it but well, I think that's the, the best advice you gave her was to call the person that gave her the assignment. Yep. And usually they will ask answer any questions that you have. So yep. Brian says, I might have a power of attorney and will, but he cannot speak. So I told them one, I want an interpreter or maybe we can do a sign code system. But I feel that their friction, I would have everyone step out and I won. So Brian, the first advice I'm going to give you is to know what your notary handbook say about someone who can't speak. Your notary handbook has everything in there about if somebody can't speak, they can't write, they can't whatever. That's the first advice I'm going to give you uh, is to go and read the handbook about that situation. And if there is an interpreter, it probably should not be someone in the family or someone. It should be a private interpreter probably. But read your handbook first because I'm sure it has something in there about how to treat a situation like that. So let's go back to the zero quote. So he said what it means is charging family and friends for services or products. So I'm actually looked that up. I'm gonna write it down. So yeah. for everybody else here, guys, write down don't don't steal the peas. Don't steal the peas. I'm gonna write it down so I don't forget. Don't steal the peas. And it's by I would definitely remember that. Nelson, Nelson Nash. Nash. Thank so, you, Ladero. We're on the same page, Ladero. Thank you. So we're gonna look it up. Can a social worker be a witness in the hospital? Yes, they can, Brian, if they agree to it, and usually they will. Uh, Stephanie Sherrod is, uh, she, we answered that one. No, the educators, awesome live information. Thank you. Is, and being a witness, is this a great way to learn? Yep, we did that one. Mm -hmm. Just got home. Hope everyone had a nice for Terry. Hi, Terry. How do you find, uh, Stephanie said, how do you find them jobs? Did we do that? I find what jobs? I think she's talking about general motor work. Uh, Google My Business is going to be your best advertising. Yeah, you got to find your own Google, um, general notary business. Right. Uh, need a notary buddy in Illinois. Someone said, where can they sign up for witness assignments? Um, one is check our Facebook group. Because it's in there. I don't know what state you are, but we put assignments in there. All the other people do are looking for witnesses also. Number two is signing up with signing companies the regular way. Notary uh, As a notary signing agent or loan signing agent, they send out the witness jobs. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, we supposed to sign up with sign. Oh, they call it this called Genus Scan app. Thank you, Gilmore Wanda. The app I was referring to earlier, guys. If you don't have a scanner, you need a portable one. It's called Genius, Genius Scan Genius app. Scan at Genius. Okay, and it's an yep. orange icon. Yep. Uh huh. I think we're almost there. I went on the website, but I did. I did send a message instead because I didn't see the card to fill out for you to call. Yeah, send a message if you can go oh, to the be in touch tomorrow well mommy right. said if you can go to brunch every weekend you can pay for a stamp yes notary buddy located in georgia i travel for work want to make sure clients are service that's true though so mommy oh. says she performed a free service today because the client's card was declined two times and i just asked her to leave a review that was yes. nice of you yeah, but did she already know she ain't had no money? I ain't want to say it. I did not you know, want to say it. I had it. one last week and um I was running, right? She was supposed to be here at like say two o'clock and she didn't get here at two. She came at 3 30, right? Because I had another appointment. So I was canceling her. I sent her a note to cancel. She's talking about my car broke down, da da da. da. So anyway, she had $20 cash. She owed me 35. No, she owed me 30. She had uh, 20 cash. So the other 10, I started to tell her, and I did not being crazy, whatever word you want to put in there. She could have zelled me my other $10 later on, but I didn't feel like being bothered with her no more. So she opened a wallet. So I only got 20. I was like, okay, fine, 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 fine. I didn't want a review for her. I didn't want nothing for her. I, I would have said, my $10. what would Angela do? I would have said, give me the 20, I'll zell you 10. Right. JC Majestic said the prices for training is well worth it as well to learn how to notarize like a boss. Yep. It is. Ryan said a family member was asking a legal question. He said he don't practice law. 
<laughs> yeah, she said her sister run a tax business. She helped her for free, but she still charged her full price to file her taxes. But she do offer a nice love offer him. Wow. See, business. Know everybody in Illinois. It's $57 the sale price for the new class. That is course. correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's very, very detailed. The new course is amazing. I must say so myself, guys. I, I put everything into that course. So again, you will know how to do general notary work and you will not be afraid. You will not. You won't need another course after that one, I promise you. As far as general notary. Now, if you don't know how to notarize, you need to notarize like a pro. Yeah. So but somebody said, don't forget your FedEx and UPS accounts. Yeah. Set up that. Set up your FedEx and UPS. That's true. Especially when you start doing Alpha deals, you want to make sure you have that. Yeah. And uh, I did the math. If you buy all the courses on sale right now, while they're half price for everything, it's $250. And that's going to teach you how to notarize, how to do the I-9, how to do ink fingerprinting, how to do general notary, and how to build your business for 250 bucks. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty good, y'all. It is pretty good. I think so. You have all any right, Facebook? Guys, that's all I got for y'all. We'll show y'all my books right quick in case you have not seen it. You're new with us to start your notary business. The gray one is for everybody. It's also a notary educator. The orange one is for my people in Georgia. Georgia, everybody. And I will show you my notary journal. Bam. And this is for all your specialty notary work, um, your I-9, um, apostilles, anything extra is not of a notary capacity. Also, um, field inspections and whatever else you want to put in here. These are very nice. They've been highly recommended. I love it, too. I love that. And I'm not just saying that. I love that journal. They come in black, pink purple and gray yeah all right guys well as always i'm gonna wrap up it's been my pleasure to talk to you guys tonight to share our tips with you we really do hope that you make your notary business profitable and let us know if you implemented any of the tips or suggestions if you got rid of something or you found something that can help you to grow because we'd like to know about it join the facebook group completely free and i'm gonna let angela take it out yeah so please join the facebook group you get lots of gems in there lots of help from us and other people so we really appreciate you guys being here on the holiday. You could have been doing anything, but you decided to share with us and we really appreciate it. So thank you so much. It's our pleasure to always be here for Monday Mentor Night. We love this yes. platform. Be safe. Be safe, guys. Bye. All right. Till next time. Bye-bye. Thank you again for listening to the Notary Life with Kimmy podcast. We would love to be a part of your notary journey. Please visit us at notaryeducatorsllc.com for all of your notary training needs. Also, please feel free to join the Notary Life with Kimmy YouTube channel, where Kimmy has over 400 videos that will help you to grow and build a successful notary business. Until the next episode, we wish you much success on your journey. Bye.